Hello, welcome back to Space Engineers. In today's video, we'll look at another massive mining vehicle that could double as a small exploration base in survival mode. If you did want to do that, there's a few asterisks after that for survival mode, because this uses four prototech drills to all make a massive hole through an asteroid. So this thing that I'm currently standing on, and I'm going to absolutely butcher the name of, is called the Excavatron Miner, which is this lovely thing all the way over here. This is a hydrogen powered ship that, like I said, has four protect drills at the very front. We've got a very tiny interior that can lead to the cockpit and the front. If you want to hop out and come around towards the very front here, let's get in this way. We've course got all detected, which you can see right down there. Two spotlights to light the darkness. We've got jump drives on here. Plenty of large cargo containers. Plenty of ejectors at the very back, which is rather spectacular to watch as all the stone comes jutting out of. Anyway, just going to put the camera like so. Press F10, find the spawn menu, have a look around the outside. Have a very brief look at the interior, which is basically just one singular room. Then we go drive through this asteroid and see what kind of hole we can make. Now I did test out earlier to make sure it was fully functioning, and you can basically just undo the dampeners, let this thing travel at about 0.7 meters per second, and it will just keep going through an asteroid and come out the opposite side. But anyway, pressing F10, finally this is on menu, there it is. This thing is 3,128 large blocks using a couple of the DLC packs. We see up to here there's a heavy duty hydrogen powered mining ship equipped with cutting edge prototech technology. Built for maximum yields with minimum bus, it combines industrial grade strength with smart automation. Designed for deep operations and extended missions, Excavatron makes short work of even the toughest ore veins. And then down here we've got our key systems, which is of course our four giant prototech drills, four large car containers, the ejectors at the bank, which we already talked about. Down here is propulsion and power. We see we've got two jump tribes which have been spaced correctly. So if you want to, you can remove them and put in its place a prototech jump drive if you get your hands on one of them. Down here is fence which features two interior turrets at the very back of the vehicle. We've course got a bunch of AI stuff on here as well as so you can make it automatically go back to base once it's filled up and all of that. And of course we've got our standard crew setup with our crew quarters and of course our medical bay to respawn on and to recharge yourself. And we're going to give this thing a thumbs up, move around towards the very front, have a brief look around the outside, and we'll just go like I said. So putting on my lights, it's quite dark at the front here, it's quite hard to actually get the sunlight properly on this vehicle. And of course there will be links to the Skybox I'm currently using in the description below. It's a very fancy one, very blue one, with a gigantic planet down there. No, you cannot go over to it, it's just part of the Skybox. It does make for very nice screenshots. Anyway, back over here for the very front of the Excavatron, this is what we get. Where, as you can see, we've got ourselves our industrial cockpit driving around with an ore detector right below it. Above and below that, we've got spy suit light of the darkness. Then, of course, our four large prototech drills go and make a massive hole through an asteroid. And if you really want to, if you don't want to use prototech drills, you can always remove them and replace them with a bunch of standard drills. That is entirely up to you. Tiny of my light come around onto the side. So, there's a the side of our prototech drills. There's the start of our hydrogen thrusters and a bunch of green steel blocks and green catwalks come all the way across over to this orange section. This is going to be your access panels for two of your large cargo containers, being partially separated by this catwalk right in the middle, so pushing it all the way through. And well, we just might make it up the side of them. It's not really too helpful, but there's some gyroscopes back there, which you wouldn't be able to see thanks to all the panels on the sides. Okay, so we come across here, there's the bottom of a auction tank. Up here is the very top of one of our two jump drives. Then the very back here, four more hydrogen thrusters help on your left and right. Towards the very bank, orange iron panels on some grey steel blocks. At the very back here is our two interior turrets for a nice bit of defense. All of our connectors to so eject out all the stone that we don't need, or well, anything in general that we don't need. Then one hell of a lot of thrusters to move you around, or we'll get back to base to unload all of your stuff. And then speaking of unloading, how we're we going to do that? Well, thanks to our handheld connector, this is right below here. So all the way across, light on once again, more hydrogen thrusters. There's the bottom of our hydrogen tanks, so we've got two of them on here, right next to our large cargo containers. Moving all the way across, more hydrogen thrusters, more catwalks, a stripper has skin on the top and the bottom. There's your actual connector to dock up, unload everything you collected, and of course to fill up your hydrogen tank so you can keep your rear connectors nice and clear. And all the way into this little gap, covered by a small little window, there's your camera to actually help dock up that connector. Anyway, pulling away from here, moving all the way up, looking down. So all the way past to here, here we go on the very top. So we've got some fantastic use of our armor panels in the orange, and of course our hand skin once again, and cowops in the middle leads across to a doorway, which is our only way in and out of this vehicle. This is all fully automated, so once we open up the door, drop down, it'll close up automatically, or then cycle the oxygen, then unlock the door to allow us to go further into the ship. Any more hydrogen thrusters, there's the top of our car containers once again. Across here, there's the top of our jump drives, and we've got more hydrogen thrusters, and that's about it. 
across on this side. Nothing too different than what we saw on the opposite. And then that's about it for the outside for the Excavatron, which does look bloody fantastic, it has been set up, and I'm just a massive sucker for gigantic drilling vehicles, especially ones that can very conveniently go straight through an asteroid without you needing to do anything, without you needing to wiggle anything at all. Better anyway, grab hold my character, and now it's time to go inside. So walking across here, past our large target here, which you see has a bunch of ice already stored inside. We now open up the door, drop all the way down, and after a short delay, or close up, the air vent will activate, there we go, and the door right behind me will now turn on, allow us to open up and go further inside. But first of all, looking across here, here's an armory locker if you store a few bits and bobs inside, so you can just go and load yourself up with some auction bottles before heading outside. Anyway, through here, here we go, and of course the door will close up automatically behind us very, very quickly, and this is our only interior, the only interior room where we're going to be spending all of our time in when we're out and about adventuring. Of course, there's the back of the cockpit we saw at the very front, there's a gravity generator to make sure you don't well, float away when you jump. A bump pad that we'll talk about in just a moment. There's a little tripod for you to hop inside for a quick little recharge. A little desk to do your work on. And of course, access the internet. Around there's an air vent being partially covered up by a corner window block. A locker which has been partially covered up by a doorway. Then facing the opposite side, there's your big old medical bay to actually respawn on, recharge yourself, and change your suits. Around this corner, there's a toilet. And now the only thing left to do is to turn that attention back to that bump panel over here, which is quite an odd little thing, because a lot of the stuff is a external system, which is going to happen automatically, that we come over to this bump panel to turn off if we don't need it to actually happen. So first of all, this big red button is going to be an enemy warning signal, to actually make it work an enemy needs to be nearby, or we can simply come in here, I'm an enemy, actually find it, there it is, trigger now, and this whole room turns red, we've got a spinning red light up there, the sound block just spamming out enemy detected, and that's about it. So any passages inside here, it's going to know what's going on around you. But if you don't want to actually have that happen, if you're quite happy to have the enemies around you, you simply press this button, and it all goes back to normal. And anyway, over here is a very odd one, because what this is going to do, as you see we've got SK off, if I come into here, as you find it, set up actions, we see we've got a medical bay, and then our programmable blog, which will then turn off. So if we were to hit that, but first of all, looking at the medical bay, we see it's nice and green, all fully functioning, hitting that button, and after a short delay, it'll turn off, and then it basically will restart itself, because that button will also trigger another programmable blog, which will, after about 2 minutes and 30 seconds, turn it all back on. I'm not too sure what that is for, or why it was needed, but it is there nonetheless. Anyway, finally, we now hop into this, and this is what we get at the very front of the ship, so we can't really see too much going on, we're going to be heavily reliant on our two cameras, which is going to be for the very top of the drill and the very bottom of the drill. Of course, we've got the one right next to our connector to help pop it up, but no camera at the very back, which is quite odd. The point may want to grab one of the interior turrets at the back here, actually make it so you can view through it, so taking control of that, pressing number 8. So there we are, that'll be slightly more helpful when trying to reverse out a hole. Anyway, hopping out of that third person view, this is what we get all around us. So just a traditional rectangular drilling ship. We've got number 1, number 2 for your hydrogen thrusters to turn them on and off. With number 2 is a master toggle on and off all around this ship. And the ones we need to turn off the ones at the front when we move forwards, we won't slow down. Turning it back on, we'll come to a stop. Press number three to turn the drills on and off. There we are. We then got number four for the connectors below the ship to turn it on and off. Number five is then for your jump drive where if we're to turn away from the asteroid and face towards the distance right there. Press number five again. We see we can jump 1,296.12 kilometers, which is very respectable for a very heavy mining ship. Then we close that off and turn it back towards the asteroid. There we go. We of course got cameras which we've already gone through. Number eight, we can ignore because I added it on myself. And of course, number nine, once again, it's that camera below the ship. On to tab number two, you don't really need to touch any of these, barring number seven, which is a projector block to project the entire ship. So if you ever took damage, you'll be able to actually find what's damaged and repair it up with ease. Everything else here is to do with your remote control blocks and the AR blocks to turn them on and off and to set them up if you want to do that. On to number three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine, we've got nothing else. So now it's time to actually drive up to this asteroid and mine straight through it. So here we come all the way up, it's going to be very, very hard, because it's a very, very heavy ship, so you've got to make sure you're going at a very respectfully slow speed, to make sure you're not going too fast, and will slam into it, and damage those precious protect drills at the very front. In third person view, coming all the way up to it, and thank god that's saved there, just in case I do make a mistake. We're now going to ignore that ice patch on his side, at least that's not, is that an ice patch? I don't, yeah, that is an ice patch. Guess we're going to come up to this, that will do quite nicely, and I'm going to turn off the dampeners, turn on the drills, move a bit faster, and watching back here, anytime now, going to start to eject out all the stone. 
And there we go. So as we were to move very, very slowly through his asteroids, but you can see all the stone get thrown out of there. Of course, if we want to keep the stone for whatever reason, we can turn off the sorters and just actually collect up in our cargo containers. In the first person view, this is all we can see. Looking at the cameras. There we go. And of course, looking at the below camera. And we're now about to go all the way inside the asteroid. It was a brilliant free camera all the way over. And looking at the big old trail being slowly deleted by the cleanup system. All the way across. That's actually a very nice old pattern going on there. Like I said earlier, it's quite spectacular to actually watch this go. Anyway, over to here. And there we are, very, very slowly at 0.92 meters per second, going through the asteroid, putting the camera through. And yes, we see that it's absolutely no resisting, rubbing up against the side, damaging any blocks on the side. It's absolutely perfect for going through an asteroid and even actually carving out an area to make a base. In fact, looking like so, that's probably one of the first representations I've ever done of a mining ship going through an asteroid. In this camera, how we're going to come into here, actually find our cargo containers. That's the wrong screen, don't know why I keep coming to that. Finding all of that. And well, of course, we're not going to be collecting anything up. We just see all the stone being thrown into the ejectors and then ejected out. So going to 21, then back down to 14. And of course, in our actual concrete in our containers, it's simply going to be ice to be used in our O2H generators and ultimately hydrogen tanks. Outside of that, back into this view, here we go. So we're now going to come into an opening inside the asteroid. What, in fact, is that? So into here, in fact, that'd be quite a nice place to actually have a base. Quite a nice secluded area. And if I'm not mistaken... I can actually find where the drill has gone. Where has it gone? Don't know how I keep losing this thing. There we are. We now watch it from this side as it comes all the way through. So we just about see some smoke trails up there. Anytime now it should actually make itself appear or show itself. Oh, and there we go. Now the stone's starting to be deformed. Looking across to here, there's the gap. And there's the first of the four prototype drills. There's the second one. Then once it comes into this clearing properly, once it's made a clear path all the way through, I'll take over it and we'll start to drive around to see how it handles all the stone inside before it actually gets ejected out. There we are. Looking at the back here. It's a very nice little tunnel going all the way through. Very nice little pattern is made on the side here. A little indent as well. And all these backgrounds. There we are. We're now all the way through. So I can now tunnel the drills. Grab hold of this. Turn on the damners and actually fly this thing around. And there we are, a nice smooth way out. And we see we just drive this out one of these little gaps on the side. We'll go around this side. I might just hit into the wall there. I don't know. Now going to come up to here. All the way around. Is there an actual way out? Yes, there is. And here we come all the way up and around. We're going to get a bunch of stones still ejected out of the back there. If the cleanup system was not on, we'd be leaving a massive trail all the way around here that someone could follow and slowly creep up on me. No, here we go. We're now just holding down forwards, or I'm holding down forwards, and this is the speed we get. We are, well, not the fastest thing in the world, but that's being fair from a large mining ship with that much storage capacity on this thing. Well, I'm going to do a quick little jump. Here we go. And there we go. We now just jump a nice big distance away from that asteroid, and we can no longer see in the distance. We're coming to the stop. There we go. Moving left. And moving right. Still very slow, but still very respectable with this size of mining ship. Moving down. And then moving up. Again, it feels about the same as left and right, so it's very well balanced all the way around this thing. Moving forwards and backwards. Moving backwards feels a little bit better than moving forwards. It might be my imagination, it might be identical, but it certainly feels that way to me. Then, of course, finally, gyroscope patrols moving this thing around. Let's go over to here. And this is what we get. So, as you can see from the camera view, we actually got a surprising amount of good shot over this thing. It's actually quite a stark difference compared to the actual thrusters as we were moving around, to the point we can easily do 180 if we want to do that, but it's not really going to do too much at the end of the day, considering the sheer difference between moving forwards and backwards, but still it's very nice to see this type of ship and how well balanced it actually is. But as for that, that's pretty much it for the Excavatron. Hopefully I am saying that correctly, I've said it quite a lot in this video, so do excuse that. And there'll be a link to its vision below, to which download play around yourself. Highly recommend you do, because it is a fun little vehicle to drive around and of course make a massive hole through an asteroid. And of course, there will be links to Skybox I'm using as well, like I said. I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye-bye.